Alright everyone, welcome back to another Barbecue Bros video. Hope you all had a great 4th of July. I had a really good one. The St. Louis ribs that uh, I smoked came out really good. And um, we had a, had a huge party over at a friend's house. Had about 35 people or so. And we had a couple butts, a picnic, and uh, three fatties, and just all kinds of stuff. Plus the ribs I brought over, so it was really good. Um, what I'm, so tonight is, uh, Friday, and what I'm going to be doing tonight is a smoked meatloaf, and, um, I'm just going to be completely honest with, with you, uh, this is the first smoked meatloaf that I'm going to be doing in my cast iron pan, and, um, I've seen quite a few people online that do it with a cast iron pan. Typically, people use a loaf pan. Uh, an aluminum loaf pan where they kind of cut holes through the bottom of it so the the grease and fat can drain out. But then I've seen other people talk about how they like the the grease just staying in the bottom because it kind of just forms this like little greasy goodness layer on the bottom. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna try that out. I'm sure it's gonna come out amazing. I'm not too worried about that. I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through what I'm gonna put. Uh, in this meatloaf here tonight and then um, I've already got the kettle uh, getting hot we're going to be using uh, indirect heat at about 350 I'm going to control the kettle with my DigiQ so we'll keep it right at 350 honestly I have no idea how long it's going to take it'll I'm assuming probably a couple hours so hopefully not much longer than that or the wife is going to kill me um, so let me go ahead and walk you through what I'm going to put in this guy We've got ground pork. This is a pound of ground pork. This is a pound of ground beef. I've also seen where guys even throw ground veal in there if you want to, but I like doing both uh, beef and pork. These are chopped up uh, green bell peppers that I actually uh, just pulled from my garden the other day, so excited about using those. <clears throat> this is half of a sweet Vidalia onion. This is two eggs that I just beat up with a fork. This is a quarter cup of milk, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of salt. Uh, over here we've got, uh, that's two teaspoons of just hot sauce. This is just Louisiana hot sauce. This, this is optional. I just like to add a little bit to give it just a very slight kick. One teaspoon of ground black pepper and then this is half a cup of breadcrumbs. So let me grab my large mixing bowl. It might be a little hard for you guys to see all this but let me go ahead and just get all this stuff in here. It doesn't matter what order you put all this in. Basically with a meatloaf you just throw all this stuff in and then just mix it up with your hands. And uh, milk, garlic powder, onion powder, salt, breadcrumbs, pepper, and hot sauce. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and mix all this up good. I apologize if you can't see this too well. It's kind of hard to get a good angle with this large bowl. And you just want to mix this up nice and good. I like to throw these uh, green peppers and onions in here. That's that's kind of optional. Uh, a lot of times you see recipes that don't really have any veggies in them, but I like to do it, and I don't really get too concerned with chopping them up too finely because uh, my wife and I both just love green peppers and onions, so we like we like having nice little chunks in there. This smells really good already and 
that's about all it takes right there. What I'm going to do is throw it down on my cutting board here. By the way, this uh, this cutting board that I use here, uh, I recently got off Amazon, and this has just been uh, so nice to have. It's uh, 24 by 18, I believe, and it's massive. I mean, it, you can just put so much stuff on this, and I think it was only like uh, it was only like twenty dollars or something like that on Amazon. So if I think about it, I'll try to put a link up in there. I've probably got a link on my blog somewhere. But so, like you've probably seen people that use um, loaf pans, they're going more for that rectangular shape. Where you know, since this is going to be going in a my cast iron, you, you know, you don't have to really worry about the shape. And uh, go ahead and put this down here. This guy is ready to go. Uh, if you can see, I put some olive oil and wiped that down so you've got a nice little oil coat on the base. And again, I'm not going for looks. I don't, I don't care about what shape this is. Just since the skillet is round, I just make this guy round. And that's it. So some nice color in there. It smells really good. I can smell, even though it was just two teaspoons, I can smell that hot sauce coming off of it. So I'll pick up in a few minutes once the kettle is ready and I'll show you how I've got the kettle set up for this cook. Alright, the kettle is, uh, is got up to temp now so I'm getting ready to throw the uh, meatloaf on. And I wanted to show you guys my my setup. You've probably seen this before, but um, down here on the kettle, I've got the fan for the DigiQ that's mounted right there. So it's completely controlling the temp of this large Weber kettle. And um, as you can see right here, uh, it is dead on 350. So I dialed it in to 350. This over here is my Maverick controller, and this guy uh, is monitoring both the pit temperature and it's going to be monitoring the food temperature too. And so that's all wireless. So uh, the DigiQ actually right here on the end, it's got a food probe also, but I don't need it for this cook. I like to use the Maverick. Uh, you know, if I only need one, I'm just using the Maverick because it's showing everything to me wirelessly while I'm sitting inside in the AC. So they're only two degrees off, so they're both really nice instruments. Um, I absolutely love having these little gadgets to help me cook. So uh, let me go ahead and pass the camera off. So let me go ahead and show you how I've got this set up. So I'm doing a little indirect cook and those are the little steel baskets that come with the kettles, uh, at least with the 22 and a half and this, this bigger guy. I'm not sure about the 18, but um, I've got a couple of hickory wood chunks on there and um, just kind of let the chunks get kind of ashed over and they've been smoldering. So the smell that's coming out of this kettle right now is just amazing. Over here, if you can see that, that's the... Uh, that's the pit probe for the DigiQ, and that's the pit probe for the Maverick. I just kind of keep them right next to each other. Sometimes I'll space them out just to get various readings throughout the, the kettle or the smoker. So as you guys have seen with this large 26.75 uh, inch kettle, there's just a ton of grill real estate. And so you can see this is a... This is a uh, 12 inch cast iron skillet and I mean you can just see how easy that fits right there on the kettle. So I'm going to go ahead and get it closed up here. And going to be mon- oops, thank you Jen, <laughs> lovely wife, pointing out things I'm forgetting. So let me go ahead and uh, I'm just going to put this right in the middle. Just like that. Woo, man, that is hot. Smoke. All right. That guy's just gonna sit there just like that. And there we go. And that's gonna climb back right back up to 350 in just a couple minutes. 
and I'll be washing everything from inside and we'll pick back up uh, probably in an hour or so when I go to put the barbecue sauce on top. Alright, it's been close to an hour to an hour if we look over here at the Maverick is that cycling through you're gonna see where it's about at 145 degrees what I like to do when I'm doing meatloaf let me go ahead and open this guy up is I like it to cook for a while um, without the sauce on top so the the smoke can go ahead and kind of penetrate a little bit better and so it's going to be done shortly, so I only want the sauce on top for about 20 minutes or so. So I'm just going to temporarily take the food probe out. What I wanted to share with you guys tonight is a new sauce. Uh, this sauce is called Dimples. The good folks at Dimples up in Raleigh, North Carolina sent me some of their sauce to try out. Um... Let me just go ahead and tell you this sauce is absolutely amazing. Uh, it's a sweet tomato based sauce with a, uh, it kind of hits you a sweet up front with a vinegar kick on the back. And um, if you check out their website, which I'll have a link in the video description, um, you know, they kind of talk about how you really can use this sauce on anything. And as, as soon as I opened up the package that they sent me, um, with a couple bottles of this, you know, obviously I, I went ahead and tasted it right away. Um, it is amazing. And um, I can see how, you know, this is this could easily be one of those staple sauces that you would just kind of keep in your fridge at all times just to throw on whatever you're cooking. And so I uh, really appreciate Rich with uh, Dimples bar uh, Barbecue Sauce for sending me uh, some of their sauce. Definitely check those guys out. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to go ahead and just, you can see how creamy this is. So this isn't one of your sauces that has a lot of specks in it. Some sauces have, you know, you can see different spices and stuff floating around. Look how smooth that texture is. Um, the purpose of this sauce is just to be super smooth and sweet, and they do a really good job of doing that. So we're just going to, I'm just going to pour this all over like this. This meatloaf is looking unbelievable. I'm obviously going to go real heavy with this, and then this sauce is going to kind of thicken up and caramelize as it as it wraps up the next 15 degrees or so. So that's it. I just coated the heck out of that guy. I'm going to put the food probe back in so I can keep an eye on it. I hadn't come out here to check on it once. I just with the with the Maverick over here. I just been washing it from inside the whole time. So I'm just gonna stick it in just like that. That's all I got to do. Go ahead and close this lid up, and then I'm gonna pick back up once I got it inside and I and I slice it and show you what it looks like. All right, just pull this off the kettle. Uh, it is about 170. I meant to pull it off about 165. I wasn't paying attention. That doesn't matter. Um, but uh, the Maverick is uh, plus or minus, I think it's like one degree or something like that. So it's dead on. You can see how nice this color is right here. The, the Dimples barbecue sauce I have on top is kind of um, caramelized. It's uh, looking really nice. And um, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and cut into this guy. And there you go. Check that out. That doesn't make you hungry there's something wrong with you. <laughs> this looks amazing. You can see uh, you can see uh, just this nice crust up here on top. Um, the meat is just cooked perfectly and I basically just sliced it like a pie and we're about to just get epic on this thing. So thanks for watching and uh, if you guys try this out, if you mix up the recipe or try any other methods, let me know in the comments. 
and uh, we'll see you again soon.